Our next speaker is Anne-Margaret Withers. And Anne-Margaret is a veterinarian and the Senior Manager for Outreach, Education and Programs for RSPCA New South Wales. In 21 years at RSPCA New South Wales, she's worked as a general practice vet, supported the RSPCA's inspectorate work, and was foundational in the development and delivery of RSPCA's New South Wales social support programs, assisting vulnerable pet owners in times of crisis, as well as their outreach programs delivering services in low income, regional and Aboriginal communities. These programs provide access to preventative veterinary services and education, recognising their importance in the well-being of people, community and animals. So we welcome Dr Anne Margaret Withers discussing utilising a social return on investment report to assign monetary value to the impact of the RSPCA New South Wales Community Programs Support of Vulnerable Communities. Okay, so yes, today I'm going to speak about how we used a, a social return on investment to value RSPCA New South Wales community, com, community programs, programs that support vulnerable pet, pet owners in times of crisis. And um, it will really speak to putting the value to the incredible work that Jennifer is doing. I was just like, going, wow, amazing. So thank you. Um, I, to begin, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which we um, are meeting today, and I pay my respects to elders past and present, and I extend that respect to all First Nations people here today. So yes, I, I'm, uh, I am a vet. Uh, I'm also the senior manager for outreach programs. Uh, Outreach programs are part of the community team at RSPCA New South Wales. So we're uh, the newer proactive area of operations um, that most people don't really know about when they think of the RSPCA. Uh, my three areas of responsibility, as Simone said, um, are our education team uh, who work with youth, uh, community and schools, uh, providing education for prevention, um, sorry, this is not the updated slide, oh no, um, who provide education for uh, prevention, um, care and responsibility. Uh, also our community outreach team uh, that Claudia Jones is going to speak about tomorrow afternoon, so please stick around um, to, to uh, listen to that because that'll be really good. Outreach work in the preventative space and they provide core preventative veterinary services, um, resources, and share knowledge, we target less advantaged communities to keep animals at home and healthy. And then we have our community programs team. That are, they're our social support programs that assist vulnerable pet owners in times of crisis. So these are our three formalised um, social support programs. In the early 2000s, RSPCA established uh, an aged care and a domestic violence program due to the overwhelming need of uh, animals being surrendered into our shelters. And this was joined in 2010 by a homelessness program. Uh, we've grouped together emergency boarding, which is a default, default service that uh, all RSPCAs provide um, and is coordinated by our programs team in New South Wales in with homelessness for the purposes of the report as both programs provide similar services. Our community social support programs provide essential services to society's most vulnerable pet owners in times of crisis, ensuring that pets and people ultimately stay together and animals aren't left in danger or end up surrendered to animal shelters. The programs ensure people are able to continue to experience the many benefits of the human-animal bond and to know that their beloved pet, who's often the only source of support and companionship, is safe and well when they themselves are experiencing difficult circumstances. 
whether due to being socially isolated while ageing, facing homelessness or domestic violence, or experiencing a sudden crisis, which is usually related to mental health, uh, but also often illness or natural disasters, rendering someone temporarily unable to take care of their pet. The core services provided within each program are temporary foster care or boarding, um, as well as assistance with veterinary, uh, veterinary care and fees provided internally by RSPCA New South Wales or by external boarding facilities or veterinary practices. Uh, our team of skilled programs caseworkers assist clients and work with relevant uh, human services to ensure the best outcomes for the pet and the client. Uh, each year our programs team support over 600 vulnerable people and 1,000 animals. These programs have been established for many years and we know that it's impacting the lives of people and animals. But we had no formalised evaluation other than being able to report our outputs uh, as the programs were set up at a time to address a need. And we've been very busy doing and refining the service delivery over that time. So that's why we wanted to undertake a social return on investment to assess what we instinctively know we are achieving each day. So what is a social return on investment? It's a, an SROI, which I'll just refer to it from now on, is a, a method of evaluation using principles from the fields of economics, accounting and social research. It looks at what social change has been created and gives it a value that's not traditionally reflected in financial statements. The SROI methodology involves identifying and assigning a financial value to all the social impacts of a program or project on key stakeholders and then compares that value to those uh, of the impacts to the financial cost of the investment required to create the change. So this allows organisations and funders to understand the financial return on money involved, uh, invested in projects and the broader social benefits that are created. It's considered uh, a newer branch of economics, so there's no universal standards for measurement uh, and computation, but there are core parts to the methodology, and many, there are many organisations and consultants that will um, undertake an SROI, and the more experienced the SROI practitioner, the more credible and valuable are the results that you get. So we're really lucky at RSPCA New South Wales to have one of our vets, Dr Gemma Ma, who'd recently completed her PhD to undertake the evaluation as part of her, so, um, of her then role as social impact and evaluation officer at RSPCA New South Wales. And Gemma's amazing at research and, and there'll be another presentation on her work and keeping cats safe um, later on as well. Gemma worked with Professor Joji Ravulo from Sydney University's School of Education and Social Work to undertake the analysis and develop the reports. So how do you calculate the value of social change created by a program or service? Uh, I'm not actually going to do it, I'm just going to give you an overview, uh, but there will be a lot of numbers. After interviews with the program's caseworkers, our key stakeholders were identified. And for the purposes of the project, the main stakeholders were our clients, the clients' animals, our inspectorate and our shelters. In-depth interviews and surveys of, of stakeholders were then used to identify and understand the outcomes and changes experienced from involvement in the program. Outcomes for the animals were identified from these interviews and surveys. Obviously, we didn't interview the animals. And these changes could be positive, negative, intended or unintended. The reported outcomes were mapped out and then the social value of the outcome was calculated by using a financial proxy to give value to the changes. And finding a, a valid and reasonable proxy um, is the key to a really great SROI. So, an example of a financial proxy, for the aged care program, one of the outcomes identified um, was an extended or enhanced human-animal bond. A report in the Journal of Benefit Cost Analysis, don't know why it's around that way, calculated a dog's life was worth 2,400 Australian dollars in 2019. 
Converted to present value Australian dollars, this gave a financial a value or proxy on the bond between a person and their pet and the extra years that they were able to spend together. Another outcome experienced by clients in all three programs was improved mental health and wellbeing. So the cost of a typical mental health plan, which is typically six sessions with a psychologist at $210 per session, is used as the financial proxy. So the proxies are used in a, a complex calculation to derive a financial value for the social change that occurred for the stakeholders, good or bad, taking into account uh, what would have happened anyway, uh, or change that's attributable to other factors. And then this is all compared to the cost um, of the investment to get that ratio. And for a much more detailed explanation of the SROI, please refer to the reports and the appendices. We've got everything there. Um, it's all downloadable. I have There's a, a link at the end um, that you can go and have a look as well. And that's just a couple of uh, graphs or, um, from the reports themselves. The one I, I particularly like, the word cloud, showing, you know, asking the question, it was asked in all three programs, what does an, your animal mean to you? And, Pretty much, that's, that's it, family, everything. So really powerful stuff. And also, that's a breakdown of one of the stakeholders' outcomes, just to show you how it's all mapped out. So as well as um, the evidence and method of calculating the SROI, each report contains case studies and testimonials to contextualise the, the value calculations. And they're well worth a read. Uh, we all know the power of the connection between people and their companions, and the stories contained give the human face to the numbers. The reports also contain highlights and a number of recommendations, and I'll give just a few of the highlights from each of the reports based on the financial year 21-22. Each organisation that undertakes would have to determine what ratio um, of the ROI is value for money, but we felt the results that we got were pretty powerful. So for our aged care program, for every dollar invested, we created $5.77 of social change. 84% of clients were able to keep their companion animal or experienced an improved bond. 49% experienced improved social change, uh, social inclusion or decreased isolation. And that's you know, such an impact for older people, a group that disproportionately experiences loneliness and isolation. 3,604 nights of temporary accommodation and $85,857 of veterinary treatment was coordinated for 292 animals. For our domestic violence program, for every dollar invested, uh, $9.95 of social value was generated. 92% of clients reported experiencing improved personal safety thanks to the program. 7,428 nights of crisis accommodation was provided for 220 animals. And the outcome most valued by our clients was being able to keep their companion animals. Now homelessness program, homelessness and emergency boarding, for every dollar invested, $8.21 of social value was created. 90% of clients experienced improved mental health and wellbeing. 12,206 nights of crisis accommodation was provided for 627 animals, and the outcome most valued by clients was being able to keep their companion animal. Across all programs, during the 12-month period that the report examines, RSPCA New South Wales provided 23,000 nights of crisis accommodation for more than 1,100 animals and created over $10 million in social value, which is pretty incredible. So the reports also came up with a number of recommendations, none of which will be a surprise for those of us working with vulnerable people and their companion animals. Consistently, for all programs examined, the demand for these services outweighs the supply and the sector's ability to support people and their pets. Unsurprisingly, the reports recommend an increase in funding to allow for an expansion of services to better meet the demand for RSPCA New South Wales programs and an increase in funding in the sector to allow for an expansion of crisis services, both in capacity and location across the state. 
Another recommendation from the report was that service providers and policy makers need to consider companion animals and the important role that companion animals have as part of the family when developing policies and delivering services for vulnerable members of our community. For example, more DV refuges um, need to become pet inclusive, allowing people to flee DV and bring their animals with them because they are family. Another example is the need to change uh, legislation and policies to allow pets in rental accommodation. And thankfully, that, that is something that is happening, starting to change now. And finally, the reports recommend a more focused, focused active collaboration and information sharing among, um, across the sector and among organisations, recognising the importance and, uh, of the bond between people and animals. We've already started to use these report findings uh, in grant applications, in uh, submission to government inquiries, to advocate to human housing and crisis services, to, uh, to recognise the need to accommodate pets. And we've recently sent the reports to all New South Wales government ministers in all portfolios. So SROIs can be a valuable tool for our animal welfare not-for-profits, uh, helping to measure, communicate and enhance our ability to show our impact. Through providing evidence of the value created, we can work to attract more resources, improve programs and make a greater difference in the lives of the animals and communities we serve. I need to have a client story, but I, I've run out of time, which is very unfortunate. Two minutes? Okay. I'll get into it. So uh, we asked... Uh, so, yeah, while the numbers do tell an important story, it's the stories of people and their pets uh, that count. And we asked a long-term client to read the reports and ask her what the findings of the research meant to her and what the findings could move, mean moving forward. So I served in the Navy for 10 years, completing multiple operational deployments. I was medically discharged due to mental health issues sustained while serving. I have three King Charles Cavaliers. My three boys, Panda, Jimmy and Bob, are pretty much my life and have kept me going even on my darkest days. For a few years, I didn't seek mental health support as I had no one to care for my boys while I got the help I needed. Since I've been introduced to the RSPCA programs team, my life has turned around. I've been able to seek treatment as an inpatient because I knew my boys would get the care I could not afford to give them. For once, with the support of the programs team, I was able to take care of myself and get the help I needed as an inpatient at a mental facility. Reading the report, I can immediately identify and relate to how this program has assisted me on numerous occasions. I really do believe that because of the program's team, my mental health has improved, although it's still not the best. I do believe if it wasn't for the program's team being able to provide the crisis accommodation for my boys, I would not be alive today. Mental health is not only limited the more densely populated areas, so being able to expand the services that have helped me so much um, to the more rural areas can only be a benefit. At one stage, someone told me that it would be kinder to surrender my pets. Unknown to them, I see my dogs as family. They support me in every way to the stage now where my psychiatrist and GP always ask me how my boys are doing because they've witnessed how much they mean to me. Having other agencies and support services, seeing how beneficial the human animal bond is, could only improve and increase the services available to those families in need. Being able to reunite with my boys upon discharge from the mental health hospital has been the highlight of my treatment without a doubt. Even the photos and videos I would get while admitted of my boys enjoying their time while in care would leave a smile on my face and put a spring in my step and I would happily show everyone in the hospital that would look. Looking at the financial side of things shows the benefit of the care provided through RSPCA. If I did not in get introduced to the programs team, I'd eventually have to eventually surrender them to the shelter, as I would not have had the financial means to organise care for them while I got the mental health treatment I needed. That would have financially impacted the RSPCA, finding them new homes. It would have severely mentally impacted me, as my boys are what kept me going. And it would have impacted the boys, as they've been with me since they were puppies. For them, having to find a new home and potentially being separated would have had their own mental effects on them. Looking at this report, I can see the benefit it has, not only for me and my boys, but also the wider community and how it would grow to benefit more people in dire needs in the future. So thank you and 
that, that's the link to the reports um, if you want to download it. And that's also some information about our amazing programs team as well.